Thank you. One more time for Dave. Dave, this is what he has. First of all, thank you guys for packing out the Burbank Comedy Festival. You guys, this is like, you guys are true comedy fans. And I love that because we get, you know, sketchy comedy fans in here, but you guys are the real deal. Because I'm listening and you're enthusiastic, but yet you still know that you retain the power of the room tonight. You're still the judge and jury, right? You laugh at what you like, you don't laugh at what you don't like. You force us to get it right. And then we force you, buy a couple of drinks, check that fucking attitude just a little bit. <laughs> Now, a lot of people want to know what we did before we did stand-up comedy. I used to be in the Marine Corps. That was my job before I did this. And, uh, well, <laughs> thank you. Usually people look at me, they go, look, man, uh, don't take this the wrong way. But you don't look anything like a Marine. Well, no shit, I don't look like a Marine. Because that's exactly what the enemy would be expecting me to look like. <laughs> see, one thing I did learn, though, is that women still love a man in uniform. I see this every airport in America. This is a mythical power. You put this in the bank, women love a man in uniform. Yes, they do. Except for adult Boy Scout troop leader. <laughs> that is the creepiest shit I've ever seen in my life. I saw a troop going through the airport. I want to grab the kids and say, look, I don't want to scare you, but there's a grown man dressed just like you <laughs> attempting to blend in with you right now. How do you even explain that behavior? What are you doing this weekend, Jim? I'm going to dress up like the kids and take them in the woods. It's all good. <laughs> don't groan at me. That's a legitimate behavior every weekend. So it's fun to get up and do stand-up. It's amazing if you talk to us, the exciting lives that we lead as stand-up comedians. I am not going to lie to you, particularly the day we do a show. Our lives get infinitely exciting the day we do a show. I mean, just listen to some of the stories that come off the stage. They all start out, this just happened to me on the way over here today. My girlfriend and I just broke up. I just got back from Las Vegas. Is it me? Or do most comedians' lives seem just a little too convenient for their act? <laughs> I mean, take me, for example. I just found out my wife is pregnant. I mean, I just found out, as in as I made that sentence up, I just found out. And we get in a huge fight right before the Burbank Comedy Festival because I want to pretend to smoke so that I could quit for this joke and then she freaked out because the fake baby could be affected by secondhand joke smoke. I'm like, wait a minute, it's my joke. I can do whatever the hell I want to. So it turns out the joke's on her because the fake baby, not mine. See, some of you are laughing, but some of you are like, I don't like him now after what he did to that fake baby. I guess it depends on when you think life begins for a fake baby. Is it when the idea is conceived? Or is it when the joke is fully developed? I mean, what if somebody forces me to write a fake baby joke against my will? Am I supposed to keep the joke? Or maybe I should do the right thing and I should finish that joke as if it were my own and then give it to a nice gay couple that's not funny. I like that one clap. I appreciate that. That's, <laughs> it's like, that's good stuff, but it's only one clap good. That's only... Way to support the team, brother. Way to support the team. Look, I, I've been trying to give back recently, too, and I, I decided I was going to donate blood. And uh, here, by the way, we need the young blood. You young people, we need that millennial blood. It's fresh and it's pure and it, it's unstressed because it hasn't moved out of its parents' house yet. It's great. <laughs> Here's a little fun fact. Number one blood donors in America? Senior citizens. Senior citizens are the number one blood donors in America. Now, I wish somebody had told me this because I went into the blood bank and I saw five old people lying on gurneys and I thought, shit, I'm too late. <laughs> but in all seriousness, they need your blood because your blood donation expires in 42 days. When you donate blood, it expires in 42 days. And then after that, uh, I believe it's available at the 99 cent store. I think that's what happened. But if you want to give blood, man, they have questions. You think you're cleared hot, brother? Think you got what it takes to be blood worthy? They want to know where you've been. How many people you had sex with? You've been to a foreign country? Do you have sex with people in that country? Do you have a sexually transmitted disease? I was like, not anymore. <laughs> I transmitted that to other people. I don't have that. <laughs> question 17, have you ever had sex for money before 1977? It's a legitimate question. Sex for money before 1970. I guess the IRS wants back taxes. I don't know. <laughs> And have you ever had sex with a man even once? And thank God they put even once, right? 
right? <laughs> I just sort of assumed that the first one's on the house, so I'm glad. <laughs> All right, I'll leave you with that little harrowing moment right there. We had a crime come to my neighborhood, right? Freaked out people in the neighborhood. And my buddy called me and he goes, hey man, I think I gotta get a gun. Now, this is my theory on why men buy a gun to defend their homes. I think that men buy the gun, and they think the gun will magically transform them into a badass action hero in the middle of the night. Do you really believe when your life is on the line and the shit hits the fan at 2 a.m., you're gonna get up in your underwear, grab a weapon you probably never fired before, shoot down the hallway, calm, cool, and collected with your perfect little movie soundbite, and go, ch ch buenos noches, cupcake. <laughs> I don't own a gun. If somebody broke into my house and I hear ch -ch, that's my spine and sphincter saying goodbye to each other. <laughs> now, for the record, I'm not anti-gun. I am not anti-gun. I'm just pro baseball bat. That's how I do it in my house. The baseball bat could be the perfect home defense weapon because guess what? Any idiot in this room can swing a baseball bat because you don't have to be baseball good to defend your home, do you? Hell, you just have to be pinata good is all you have to be. As a matter of fact, the bigger spaz you are, the deadlier you appear to the intruder. A gun is a dangerous way, but you could handle a gun and accidentally shoot yourself, but no one has ever cleaned a baseball bat and accidentally beat themselves to death. All right, you guys have been a lot of fun, man. Enjoy the rest of the festival.